Hi everyone, it's Cherry Enchantress. I'm not hungover. I only had one margarita, but anyway, um, I I did also go to for Beltane. I went to the Thorn and Moon Market in Houston, Texas, and I found this amazing deck. So I'm like, I've never heard of the Enchanted Tarot before, and hello, I'm Cherry Enchantress. I should own this. Um, yeah, so it comes in this humongous box. And let's go ahead. I already took the plastic off. Let's take a look inside. So it's like this flip thing. Very nice. And this is um, the 25th anniversary edition. And it comes with this humongous. <laughs> so this is pretty large deck. This is like uh, oracle size. So I'll open that. And then comes with this book so we'll look through this and then the rest is filler and what's the, oh wow a pouch how sweet definitely need that and i guess i can throw the filler away <laughs> all right so i'm excited to show you i'm gonna tilt down the camera a bit all right let's look at this awesome book the Enchanted Tarot. Have not let yet looked at this, so we're seeing this together. Twenty five years. Had no idea this existed. <laughs> Come on, look at that. All right. When when we received the first printed copy of the Enchanted Tarot from our publisher, we were so excited. We opened it up, shuffled the deck picked a card. It was the Ten of Pentacles. To us, this is a card always meant the founding of a dynasty. Hmm. Now with the publication of this most beautiful 25th anniversary edition from Race Point Publishing, the Enchanted Tarot is recognized for its enduring power and beauty. The original tapestry of the Ten of Pentacles card has hung next to our bed over the years and is a symbol of manifestation, protection, blessings, success, security, and tradition. That is awesome. Well, we'll s and look, it's the it's the partnership. It's like in a silhouette. That's like my enchanté, mademoiselle. <laughs> oh yeah, it is the enchanté. It's the enchanted. I am enchanted by you, madam. So we'll have a little introduction. Uh, and they're talking about reversed cards, interpreting the cards. Mm -hmm. I think I have seen this, um, like in, in those tarot.com or some place, those places where you do like the pick of the digital little shuffle thing, maybe that might be where I've seen this. All right. And then spreads. This is so beautiful. It's full color spreads and explanations. The, the cards of the ancient tarot, I mean enchanted tarot, tell an ancient story using beautiful pictures filled with love and wisdom, and they are descended from a time when only the privileged few could read, like the cave paintings made by Neolithic tribes to teach their young the physical and spiritual attributes of local animals. The enchanted tarot has evolved from the ancient unbound pasteboard books of hand-painted cards used to teach the illiterate population of India, China, and later Europe the life lessons learned by the wisest of their race. These lessons had long ago been incorporated into the earlier religions which protected them, projected them as various attributes and qualities, the knowledge of which was essential to lead a successful and harmonious life onto the goddess and the gods who adorned their temples. You know, and the cards are a convenient method of transporting. It's very, that is a very interesting view on the tarot. It's like, they are very pictorial. I always feel like um, our dreams are like that too. They're very um, symbolic and full of imagery and uh, ways to guide us and talk to us. And the other thing that, that came to mind as I flip through <laughs> the magician, etc. Oh, so pretty. The other thing that came to mind is that, um, now that slipped my mind, is, uh, okay, I had an interesting question once 
for my very practical Capricorn brother-in-law and he's like what what really is good knowing how to draw pictures you know there's so many ways now we can communicate where we don't need that the art of drawing is doesn't seem that important anymore and I and I thought to myself you know what if there ever came a time where we reverted back to purely communicating through artwork like in the original caveman days you know so I think it'll always be an important way to communicate through art through these kind of stories within a card yeah <laughs> that's how I see them stories within cards to help you guys follow a certain path or guide you or um, bring about manifestation you know because manifesting that the best way to manifest something or one of the keys to manifesting is visualizing it right visualizing and you if you have a, a nice picture in your mind then you can visualize this into reality your reality that you desire there is the author and the artist oh they look like a couple <laughs> uh monty farber's inspiration amy zerner and Mont Mont Fiber Farber. All right, cute. Nice. All right, let's take a look at the cards now that we had sort of a spoiler alert. <laughs> so I guess this isn't one that I, you know, they're long like my, my Oracle cards, so at least I can shuffle them like my Oracle, but let's take a look. All right, we have the Fool. I, I'm feeling like you know, this isn't necessarily a different kind of tarot, but it, you know, I feel like it, we'll see. Uh, we'll just look at these. <laughs> All right, the magician. Yeah, it's kind of going along. The high priestess. This, by the way, this deck, this whole, this box set I got at the, at the Thorn and Moon Market for only $30, this huge, deck the empress the emperor it was calling to me and it has a pretty this is definitely one where i love the borders i'm not like a border fan but i love these borders and i love the backing too it's just really nice the lovers the chariot Oh, and, I mean, I'm, oh, and they're kind of color-coded. Nice. See? Then the different suits. That's, that's really nice. So the Major Arcana looks like it's all in purple. The Hermit. Ooh, the Wheel of Fortune. Pretty. Justice. The Hanged Man. Death. I feel like and part of the reason why I wanted this perfect up, the I wanted to uh, show you so I can bless them and use them right away because I'm real curious. I might use them in a TikTok video, so y'all look out for that. The devil, that's a nice devil. It's kind of mask. I like that. It's interesting. It's a different way to interpret to the devil. It's a good way too. <laughs> the tower, the star, the moon. The sun, judgment, the world, strike a pose. All right, now we're going into wands energy here. So we have the ace of wands. And my very first deck that I ever bought, well, I think it, I mean, I bought the Rider Waite deck, but when I, when I started this channel, or before, right before I started this channel, I went to a convention and I bought the Enchanted Oracle. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Okay, two of wands. Time for action. Three of wands. It's like, on your mark, get set, go. I think the two and three of wands are a little bit of like on your mark, get set. <laughs> Four of wands, but that's 
that's kind of the go. It's time to party. That's what last night felt kind of, felt very four of wands. It didn't feel like twin flame time, but it felt like celebration. Five of wands and way better than I expected it to be. I had a little bit of social anxiety, but initially before I even got there and turned out, I felt very happy. It felt good. The, the people, everyone's energy was good. So, well, most of them. <laughs> Seven of wands. Eight of wands. Nine of wands. Ten of wands. Anyway, the, some of you who are watching this are like, what the heck is she talking about? <laughs> I'm Cherry Enchantress, and if you want to follow me on Instagram, you're welcome to do that too if you don't know who I am, and I'm just talking a little bit about personal stuff. Prince of wands, but those of you who know me, hey! <laughs> Queen of Wands, King of Wands, very nice. Okay, and now we're going into Swords, the Ace of Swords, Two of Swords. I just love these colors. Mm, so nice. <laughs> three of Swords. Uh, you know what? For Three of Swords, this is a really neat card. Very interesting. I like it. <laughs> Four of Swords, very nice. Yeah, so it goes, it'll be real easy to read, I think. Like, the imagery is really good, and it's still traditional. It's it's unique, it's it's, it's new votes, and different, you know, but it's, it's still traditional. So we got the Six of Wands, Seven of Wands, bless you, my daughter, <laughs> Eight of I mean, so swords, sorry, swords, where am I? Swords, and um, nine of swords. That's a pretty happy looking nine of swords. It's not exactly happy, but it doesn't look too devastating. Like, there's hope, you know? And then ten of swords. And princess of swords. And prince of swords. What a beautiful prince. Queen of swords. All right, maybe her face is a little skewy. Other than that, I haven't seen anything that I don't like about this thing. King of Swords. All right, now we're going into hearts, which is cups. So that's nice. Ace of Hearts. Ooh, look at the um, swans. I love swans. Two of Hearts. Three of Hearts. Four of Hearts. Five of hearts, six of hearts, seven of hearts, eight of hearts, nine of hearts. That's so sweet. And here is the ten of hearts. I feel like I've seen this one. I recognize it somehow. <laughs> oh, what pretty queen of uh, princess of hearts. Prince of hearts. Queen of Hearts, King of Hearts, Ace of Pentacles. All right, now we're doing Pentacles. Okay, here we go. Two of Pentacles, Three of Pentacles, Four of Pentacles. Ooh, Five of Pentacles. It's, it's not so bad. I mean, it is sort of snowy, cold feeling, but look, he's pointing to the stars. He's like, hey, let me bring you inside and get you warmed up. So that's really nice. <laughs> Six of pentacles. Seven of pentacles. Eight of pentacles. Nine of pentacles. How sweet. Ten of pentacles. Yeah. And there you go. <laughs> The Legacy, Princess of Pentacles, Prince of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles, her face to just a bit, not too bad, and King of Pentacles, oh I like him, I have a crush on the King of Pentacles in every deck and this guy also <laughs> is crush worthy, okay so let's, um, let's just put them all together and do a little shuffling, see what happens. So I feel like 
definitely can't rifle shuffle or you know whatever long ways but we can vertically shuffle let's see. a little stiff that way okay let me get the hang of it see it's interesting the back um looks sort of golden it's not really foil or anything but it really because it's um a, just sort of a light matte gloss it sort of picks up the light in a in a nice diffused way instead of the light bouncing off and glaring it's sort of a pretty diffused light i like that it's kind of a diffused light very nice so it, it has it's sort of a um it's not exactly a matte and the thick the texture is you know it's not oracle thick but it's definitely thicker than maybe thicker than most tarot this is nice i mean i feel like some people could use this as an oracle too you know or just like however you want to i just kind of like the way the light bounces off the backs in a diffused way All right, let's, let's see what your card is. I'll shuffle them like I shuffle my deck, my oracle decks. They are a little like clumpy, right? Clumpy? Ooh, but clump or no clump, something always comes out. Uh-oh, we have the Five of Swords. So let's see what the book says about the Five of Swords. It's kind of a like a storm warning. It's like something happening and, and not being sure. Um, there's there's a bit of like knowing when to throw in the towel, you know. It's about surrender and defeat, but it's about knowing when oh, you've already you've put enough fight into something and you can't fight it anymore. I feel something like that. Um, and I think a lot of people like are get stubborn. And it's like fighting an uphill battle or going against the current or going against a situation. It's more important to go, in most cases, more important to go with the flow. If you keep trying to go against it, you may just, it may be a lot of effort for, for no results or for something that is just not meant to be, right? So, um, yeah. In, in in regular tarot, I see this as the cheater card, but or the hollow victory. So somebody winning, but through through not the best means, you know, not always the most uh, credible means, credible way. Although I think sometimes uh, shortcuts can be handy and helpful. Sometimes also it's important to experience the journey every step of the way and not try to skip and get to the end so fast you know um this there's okay so there's three segments it's they have the dream the awakening and the enchantment so i the dream is just talks about you know the card in general the awakening is saying um, if the problem presents itself in this, such a way that a victory cannot be won or that its cost is so high, the fight must be surrendered. See, that's kind of what I was thinking. It's, accept this. Look to the future. Remember that this storm will pass. Revenge or blame need not be met meted out. This, as this will waste what precious resources you still have remaining. Where no victory is possible, it is best to walk away if you're lucky enough to be able to do so. Another, I mean, a real in a real minor way, it can, it can apply to just some simple daily situation where, let's say, you go through a fast food drive through or something, and the person gets gives you a little trouble. Like, do you really want to fight this fight? Like, it's kind of like choose your choose your battles. Do you really want to mess with that person? Like, they maybe they've been, they had a long day already or whatever, you know. So, if if you're facing, this is my dilemma though. Sometimes, you know, I have issues with customer service. If you're facing some kind of situation like that, customer service issue, then it's best 
then there are times, definitely sometimes you need to fight, but there are a lot of times, most of the time, just let it go and don't, you know, don't push the matter too much, kind of, you know, sometimes it's not, it's not the right place and time for that. So the, there's an enchantment message here. Take a long, deep breath. Consciously exhale, thinking the wheel of life turns and turns. In this time of defeat, I release my attachment to victory and plant the seeds of my future success. Repeat this mantra five times for the five of swords. As your body releases its tension, realize that you are making room in your life for new experiences and victories. Also, I, it just occurred to me a lot of people get blocked or ghosted and it hurts, right? And you get angry and sometimes you want revenge or you want to somehow get back at the person. At, that's a, a waste of energy right there. The best thing is, okay, this is happening. I'm not going to fight it. I'm going to allow this situation to unfold in whatever way and I'm just going to go back and turn into myself again. Turn into yourself and work on things in your own world, your inner self, your outer world, but yourself, okay? And your the p other people that are important to you, you know, friends, families, um, um, pets, whatever, all the other things that are important to you. So I think that's the advice from Spirit today. Alrighty, well, I hope you like that. Faith, trust, and pixie dust.